My girl and me know that our love will last forever. My girl and me know that we do belong together. But sometimes it seems I shatter our dreams with some careless word or foolish lie. My girl, we've got each other Whatever life may send us Me and my girl, we've got each other However life may bend us Sure, we'll see tears fall Love never was all rainbows But there'll always be is not strange. It droppeth as the gentle rain. The gentle rain of heaven upon the place beneath. What are you doing? I have to learn rotten Shakespeare for English Lit today. <laughs> <laughs> it was quite blessed. Like, blessed is him that gives and him that takes. Can you understand that? No, but it would have been easier in Shakespeare's day if they had invented cornflakes. <laughs> mean, it's just a load of words. It doesn't mean anything. Of course it does. It's all about magnanimity. Magna what? Well, compassion, forgiveness. Don't forget this. Man was the greatest poet ever. Greatest poet ever? So Dad says. You must be talking about Robert Burns, then. No, Isabel. William Shakespeare. Shakespeare? Yes. The greatest poet ever? Yes, I think most people would sort of agree with that. Well, how can Shakespeare be the greatest poet ever? You can't understand a word he says. That's just what I said. It's all these and those and hoity-toities. But Rabbi Burns spoke the common tongue. He knew the language that ordinary people understand. Ah, where are you going, you crowling fairly? Your impudence protects you sailing. <laughs> I canna say, but ye strunt rarely our gauze and lace. Though faith, I fear you dine, but sparely on sick a place. Excuse me, Isabel, which, which is this poem again? To a louse. <laughs> oh, yes, I thought I recognised it. Oh, for some rank mercurial roset. Or fell red smedum, I'd give you sick a hefty dozier would dress your drodum. <laughs> now, that's what I call poetry. And I thought Shakespeare was difficult to understand. Well, not many drodums in Shakespeare, dressed or undressed. Hello, <coughs> Simon. Sir. Ah, oh, morning out. Hi, Graham. Simon, dear, you couldn't possibly give me a lift to Victoria on your way to the office, could you? Well, I could if my bike had a crossbar. What happened to the company car? Ah, uh, Derek has it till he straightens things out. How do you mean? Oh, the bumper, the bonnet, the wing mirror. <laughs> <laughs> Mrs. Knessett, would you like me to ring for a taxi? Please, Isabel. An old school chum's arriving for an indefinite stay. Indefinite? Mm. Her husband had a brief uh, interlude with the catering manageress of his golf club. Ah, oh, you mean he had an affair? <laughs> yes, Sam, um, something like that. Anyway, Winifred got wind of it and walked out on him. Poor Dudley. He may learn to live without Winifred, but not without his beloved golf club. Was he thrown out? With due pomp and ceremony, they probably cut all the buttons off his plus paws and pulled the bubble off his golfing cap. Oh, nasty. <laughs> I suggested to Winifred that perhaps he'd suffered enough, but she said she's too deeply, deeply hurt to consider a reconciliation. I tried to tell her that 50% of all married men have affairs in Britain. And the rest of them have them abroad. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Derek. Oh, dear. I'm glad I'm this side of that face. You look terrible. I've got one of my recurring colds. Uh, recurring hangovers, you mean? How can it be a hangover? I didn't have that much wine to drink last night. <laughs> Did I? Well, no more than your average Roman orgy. <laughs> Talking of which, where's Liz? She's let us down again. I mean, we gave her yesterday afternoon off for that audition. On the solemn understanding, she'd get in early and finish these letters. What happens? She doesn't turn up. So I have to start typing them. It's just not good enough. No, you're absolutely right, Derek. And your spelling's not much better either. <laughs> we were talking about Liz. It's time she buckled down to some efficient work and gave up this idea of full-time showbiz. People have to have dreams. Even you. Cobber. <clears throat> What, what, what do you mean, Cobber? Does the name Bondi Beach ring a bell? 
Bondi Beach? That's one of my deepest, innermost secrets. Who told you about Bondi Beach? You did. In fact, you told the whole wine bar. <laughs> when? <laughs> Last night, when you were as sober as a newt. <clears throat> Yes, yes, you told us all in the strictest confidence, of course, that your main great ambition was to be a lifeguard on Bondi Beach so that you could uh, chat up the sailors. <laughs> Wear one of those hats with the corks hanging from the brim. So that's why my briefcase was full of old corks. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, we took up a collection to get you started. You even offered to demonstrate the kiss of life with anyone in the bar. Oh, God. Any takers? No, not of the opposite sex, but... Uh... <laughs> There was this rather nice chap, um, Kevin. Not the one with the poodle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but he's, uh... Mm -hmm. oh, I didn't demonstrate the kiss of life with him, did I? Well, at the last moment, you changed your mind and showed him how to repel sharks instead. <laughs> ah, Nell, your friend arrived safely? I've sent her back to my place in a taxi, or rather two taxis. She's arrived with enough gear to stock an Oxfam shop. No sign of Liz, I see. She's let us down again now. Oh, no. That really isn't playing the game. That's just what I've been trying to tell Simon. She isn't playing the game. I mean, I'm really fond of Liz. So am I. So am I. Very fond. Of she has a marvellous sense of fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Barrel a lot. And when she does work. <laughs> when she works, I quite agree. She works. <laughs> Absolutely. No quarrel there. <laughs> but she does lack. I know a... exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> a sense of responsibility. That's exactly what she lacks. A sense of responsibility. It's like working with a parrot. You mean the clothes she wears? No, Derek, he means you. What? Now, Derek, in fairness, I think we should wait and find out what her excuse is. I mean, she might be ill. She might have been in an accident. If so, she's made a remarkable recovery. Listen, I'm really sorry. I know I promised to come in early, but I'll catch up, I swear it. Just as soon as I've typed this personal letter. Are you coming late to do your own correspondence? <laughs> no, this letter's to you, Mr Yates. Ah, oh, well, if it's a letter of apology... Oh, no, no. It's a letter of resignation. Resignation? <laughs> I got that job I went up for yesterday. Oh, well, that's wonderful, oh. Liz. They're going to star me in a series of commercials for Samoa Cola. Samoa Cola? And uh, you know, now all those uh, kids on that tropical island have some more Samoa. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> Have some more, Derek, some more. Derek, Derek. It's too late. The part, the part's been cast. <laughs> we start shooting on Monday in Tenerife. How exciting! So I've got to hand in my notice. Y you mean you're going? I'm really sorry, Mr. Yates, but my agent said it's the kind of thing that could snowball. So I best leave myself vacant for a while. Think you can find someone to replace me? Oh, I think that might just be possible. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, you shouldn't spoil me like this on my last night. I almost feel like staying now. No, 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 Liz, you owe it to yourself. <laughs> I was going to treat you all at the wine bar. I, I'd, I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> well, uh, Derek's avoiding the wine bar for a moment, you know, cos uh, if he bumped into the wrong person, it could boomerang on him. <laughs> I still feel rotten about leaving you in the lurch. Don't worry, Liz. Everything's worked out very neatly. Winifred is stepping into the breach. Winifred? Grand's old school child. Yes, it'll take her mind off her troubles. And stop her moping about my house. Besides, before she left her husband, she did all the secretarial work for his uh, double glazing firm. She was always very efficient. Yeah, that'll make a change. <laughs> to, to, to have a, an old efficient person, <coughs> a young, beautiful efficient person. Right, Liz, after a lifetime of service and devotion to the company, how long have you been with us? 18 months. <laughs> Pretty short lifetime. Nevertheless, on these occasions, people usually get clocks. And so to carry out this ancient custom, I call upon the even more ancient... That's enough. Or should I say venerable? <laughs> Better. Director of, director of our company, Dame Nelly Cressit. No long speeches, Liz. Just our sincerest wishes for great, great happiness and success in your future career. And don't blame me for the clock. I didn't choose it. I didn't either. Actually, I chose it. Oh, it's beautiful. Just what I always wanted. A Mickey Mouse travel along. Right, ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glasses. Hang on, hang on. I've got presents for you lot as well, you know. Oh. oh. <laughs> Mrs. Cresset, this is for all the headaches I've caused you. Oh, what is it? A bottle of aspirin. <laughs> <laughs> 
And for you, Mr Yates, oh, yeah. just in case Mrs Cresset's friend don't work out. The key to the keyboard, typing for beginners. Wow, thanks, Liz. <laughs> and I've got a book for you too, Izzy. The Sonnets of Shakespeare? Sam said he's your favourite. Did she, though? <laughs> <laughs> and for you, Sam, an autograph album with the signature of one of the world's biggest stars on page one. Who's that? Me. Oh! <laughs> And for the man who has everything, what else but a bottle of bubbly? Oh, Liz, you shouldn't have got me champagne. I didn't. It's Samoa Cola. Oh. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. The more, more Samoa. Samoa. <laughs> ready for signature. I queried clause 14 and amended the wording, but it does require your initials when I place the crosses. Here are the copies of the Mellowware Prospectus and the design journals for April and May. Uh, Devon Bix called and said they couldn't make it till three, but since you're taking Samantha out to lunch, I thought you'd appreciate the extra hour. And don't forget, Nell, you have a hair appointment, 4.30 at Heads and Tails. Oh, Mrs. Yates phoned to say that the toilet was blocked up. But since you were in conference, I contacted a plumber on your behalf and it's clear again now. <laughs> Apparently, your youngest tried to flush his Roland rat down it. <laughs> you know, that's the first really intelligent thing he's ever done. <laughs> well, if that's all, I'd like to attend to the morning's mail. Winifred. Yes? You're wonderful. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Isn't she wonderful now? She's just... Just wonderful. Absolutely. You know, in five days, she's managed to streamline the office. She's simplified the filing system. She's indexed the videos and her typing, typing. Just look at this contract. It's so immaculate, it could have been typed by God. <laughs> uh, Derek, she's everything you say, but, but... But me no but, Simon. That woman is perfect. I know, but she's not much fun, is she? Fun? Fun? If you want fun, I'll buy you the Beano. <laughs> <laughs> I just wish she was a bit... Happier. She doesn't seem to get much pleasure out of anything. Pleasure is very overrated, you know. If everyone ate, drank and were merry, the whole world would be full of fat, grinning idiots. <laughs> is she still in your spare room now? Mm, and shows no sign of shifting. What's she like at her? Pretty much as she is here. Quiet, efficient, miserable. <laughs> you think she's unhappy too? She won't admit it, but I know she's missing Dudley. He's phoned repeatedly to try and find out where she is, but she refuses to let me tell him. It's their 30th wedding anniversary tomorrow. I think he wanted to get things patched up before then. Well, don't you think you should tell him? Well, I gave Winifred my word. It's their 30th anniversary. Simon, Winifred and I were prefects together at St. Augustine's. <laughs> we tied jointly for the Shakespeare Prize. I was forced off to her Prince Hal. And an old Augustinian would no sooner think of going back on her word than rigging a hockey match. Son? Yes, Winifred? I don't want you to think I'm nagging, but it is now precisely 12.23 and 40 seconds. Uh, Samantha comes out of school at 12.45 and the traffic in this area always increases around the lunch hour. Thank you, Winifred. I should take a coat. Rain is forecast. <laughs> All right, Winifred. Won't forget Denbicks are coming at three. No, I won't, Winifred. Anything else, Winifred? <laughs> if there had been, I'd have told you. <laughs> How can you even contemplate throwing that wonderful woman back into the evil coils of that Lothario, that, that double-glazing Don Juan? Who are we talking about now? Her husband. <laughs> Dudley? He's as much of a Don Juan as you are. <laughs> Don't worry, Derek. I'm not going to rock the boat. I just wish she'd smile occasionally, whistle, laugh at one of her jokes. Laugh at your jokes? Yes. Oh, Simon, don't ask the impossible. Ah, perfection yet again. It seems almost a shame we have to crease it to get it in the envelope. Mm. <laughs> Hello, darlings. Liz. The 
Samoa Cola Girl. How was it? El Fabuloso. Four days of sun, surf, and stardom. Hey, how lovely to see you again. Yeah, well, I thought it's important to keep in touch with your roots. Stops you getting big-headed. So I thought I'd just drop in and see if you needed an helping hand like. Oh, how kind of you. But Winifred here is coping very well. Coping? <laughs> That's a bit like saying IBM and muddling through. <laughs> <laughs> great, great. So you're holding the fort till they find someone more permanent. Winifred couldn't be more permanent if she was nailed down. <laughs> well, I certainly have no other plans at the moment. Great, great. So you won't, uh, you won't be needing anyone else then? You just concentrate on your career, Liz. I mean, in Winifred here, we have the secretarial equivalent of the bionic woman. <laughs> I'm sorry we can't use your help, Liz. Oh, don't be sorry. Might not be available anyway. <laughs> Difficult to plan ahead when you're flavour of the month. And uh, give my love to Mr Harrop. Tell him I might drop in again when I'm, you know, passing through Heathrow. <laughs> Goodbye, Liz. You're looking lovely. Every inch a star. <gasps> yeah, well, twinkle, twinkle. <laughs> well, we were let off early, so I thought maybe we could ask Grand to come to lunch with us. Well, there's no harm in asking. <laughs> hey, well, look who it is. Hi, Liz. How was the filming? El Fabuloso. Four days of sun, surf, and... Oh, oh Mr. Harrow. <laughs> when we got out there, it was a totally different setup. The camera crew were in a luxury hotel, and the rest of us was in a dump. My room was so small, I practically had to use a folding toothbrush. Then the director started in about wanting to improvise with me. Improvise one. Oh, I see. That kind of improvised, yeah. Does that mean what I think it means? You just eat your ice cream. <laughs> when I said I wouldn't, he started picking on me. He knew it was my first job. So I stood it for as long as I could, and then something inside me snapped. What happened? Well, he said that I couldn't even pour out a glass of cola, so I poured one out all right over him. First real contract I get, and I blow it. Oh, don't worry, Liz. You can have your old job back. Can't you, Dad? Dad? It's all right, Mr. Harrop. I saw your new secretary. Mr. Yates seems quite keen on her. Keen? If they were single, he'd offer to marry her. <laughs> but Miss had the job first. That's no reason for giving Winifred the push. But Granny says she's unhappy. So if you send her back to her husband... I can't interfere with people's lives, Sam. <laughs> Why not? You interfere with mine. Well, you're still a child, remember? Yes, but if you got her back together with her husband, mm. then Liz could get back together with you. And how do we manage that? Don't ask me. I'm just a child, remember? You're the grown-up. <laughs> it's all right, Mr. Harrop. I'll find something else to do, eventually. Ooh. Must be their anniversary. Liz, I don't promise you anything, but that couple have just given me an idea. Now, don't rush your eyes. I'm just going to make a quick phone call. Are you going to order some flowers? No. Double glazing. <laughs> I'm still very grateful to you, Winifred. It's not everyone who would agree to work on a Saturday morning at such short notice. I have nothing special planned for today, anyway. Ah, good, good, good. Now, look, you uh, didn't mention this to Nell or Derek. No. Only, you see, I think it would be right that you should learn how to work this computer, but Derek hates anyone else touching it. Yes, he does seem rather possessive about it. Yes, you'd think he'd given birth to the rotten thing, wouldn't you? <laughs> right, now, there we are. There's the manual and all the instructions. And uh, to help you familiarise yourself with the keyboard, why don't you type this out from one of Sam's school books? Oh, yes, I know that very well. Mm, good, right. I'll leave you to it, then. But uh, I don't know the first thing about computers. Wouldn't it be safer if you stayed? Oh, I doubt it. I don't know the first thing about them, either. <laughs> Dad, he's coming. Right, put the flowers by the door. Quick. Now, sit down. Sit down. Calm. Cool. Isn't this an interesting article, Dad? It would be if it was the right way up. <laughs> 
Ah, good morning. Can I help you? Good morning. My name's Spaulding. Cold free double glazing. You asked us for a quote. Ah, Mr. Spaulding, yes, of course. Uh, someone seems to have left you some flowers. Oh, no, they can't be for us. Uh, my daughter suffers from hay fever. You see what I mean? I'm so sorry. No, no, don't mention it. Now, the windows are through there. If you'd like to start measuring up, I'll join you in a minute. Yes, all right. <laughs> oh, sorry, Mr. Spaulding, Mr. Spaulding, if you could take the flowers in with you, it's upsetting my... My dear daughter. Of course, I'm so sorry. No, don't mention it, don't mention it. What do you think? What's happening? Well, they're either kissing or throttling each other. Which? I don't know, but if one of them doesn't emerge in the next ten seconds, Liz could have her job back. Simon! <laughs> Simon, Sam, the most amazing coincidence. What, what is? is? This is my husband. Your husband? This is Dudley. Dudley? You mean your Dudley? Yes. Good heavens! So you mean cold-free double glazing? It's my husband's business, yes. No! Yes! <laughs> what an amazing coincidence! Isn't it, though? And today's our anniversary. <laughs> no! Yes! Another amazing coincidence! Isn't it, though? <laughs> I hope it's a happy one for you both. Well, I've decided to forgive him. After all, he remembered our anniversary and he brought me these beautiful flowers. And, <laughs> and then it was Shakespeare. Shakespeare? The passage your father gave me to type. The quality of mercy speech. That's right, the boring old bard and you said it didn't mean anything. Well, Dudley and I have a little celebrating to do, so I wondered if you'd mind awfully if I learnt about computers another day. Of course not. In fact, I wondered if you'd mind awfully if I didn't come back at all. Well, there is somebody dying to start work on Monday, so consider yourself free. Oh, thank you. I I'll get my things. <laughs> now, about your double glazing. What? You want triple sealed units to control noise pollution, reinforce PVC surrounds, increase security. So I imagine we could do it for three thousand pounds. Three thousand uh, pounds per window. <laughs> three windows makes uh, nine thousand plus two for labour plus VAT. I imagine we could do it the whole thing for uh, thirteen thousand pounds. Thirteen thousand pounds. <laughs> I'll just finish the measuring up. Right. Yeah. This could cost me £13,000. Oh, don't forget, Dad. Mm -hmm. As Shakespeare so rightly said, mm -hmm. it blesses him that gives and him that takes. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> protects you sailing. <laughs> I canna say, but ye strunt rarely our gauze and lace. Though faith, I fear ye dine but sparely on sick a place. Excuse me, Isabel, which, which is this poem again? To a louse. <laughs> oh, yes, I thought I recognised it. Oh, for some rank mercurial roset or fell red smedum, I'd gi ye sick a hefty dozet would dress your drodum. <laughs> now, that's what I call poetry. <laughs> And I thought Shakespeare was difficult to understand. Well, not many drodhams in Shakespeare, dressed or undressed. <coughs> Hello, Simon. Sir. Ah, oh, morning out. Hi, Graham. Simon, dear, you couldn't possibly give me a lift to Victoria on your way to the office, could you? Well, I could if my bike had a crossbar. What happened to the company car? Ah, uh, Derek has it till he straightens things out. How do you mean? Oh, the bumper, the bonnet, the wing mirror. <laughs> Mrs. Knessett, would you like me to ring for a taxi? Please, Isabel. An old school chum's arriving for an indefinite stay. Indefinite? Mm. 
Her husband had a brief uh, interlude with the catering manageress of his golf club. Ah, oh, you mean he had an affair? <laughs> yes, Sam, um, something like that. Anyway, Winifred got wind of it and walked out on him. Poor Dudley. He may learn to live without Winifred, but not without his beloved golf club. Was he thrown out? With due pomp and ceremony, they probably cut all the buttons off his plus paws and pulled the bubble off his golfing cap. Oh, nasty. <laughs> I suggested to Winifred that perhaps he'd suffered enough, but she said she's too deeply, deeply hurt to consider a reconciliation. I tried to tell her that 50% of all married men have affairs in Britain. And the rest of them have them abroad. <laughs> <laughs> Morning, Derek. Oh, dear. I'm glad I'm this side of that. She's let us down again now. Oh, no. That really isn't playing the game. That's just what I've been trying to tell Sam. She isn't playing the game. I mean, I'm very fond of Lee. So am I. So am I. Very fond. She has a marvellous sense of fun. <laughs> Absolutely. Barrel a lot. And when she does work. When she works, I quite agree. She works. <laughs> Absolutely. No quarrel there. But she does lack I know exactly what you're going to say. <laughs> a sense of responsibility. That's exactly what she lacks. A sense of responsibility. It's like working with a parrot. You mean the clothes she wears? No, Derek. He means you. What? Now, Derek, in fairness, I think we should wait and find out what her excuse is. I mean, she might be ill. She might have been in an accident. If so, she's made a remarkable recovery. Listen, I'm really sorry. I know I promised to come in early, but I'll catch up, I swear it. Just as soon as I've typed this personal letter. Are you coming late to do your own correspondence? <laughs> no, this letter's to you, Mr Yates. Ah, oh, well, if it's a letter of apology... Oh, no, no. It's a letter of resignation. Resignation? I got that job I went up for yesterday. Oh, well, that's wonderful, oh. Liz. They're going to star me in a series of commercials for Samoa Cola. Samoa Cola? And you know, now all those uh, kids on that tropical island have some more Samoa. Oh, <laughs> have some more Samoa. Oh, have some more Derek, Samoa. Derek, Derek, It's too late. The part's the part been cast. <laughs> We start shooting on Monday in Tenerife. How exciting. So, I've got to hand in my notice. Y you mean you're going? I'm really sorry, Mr Yates, but my agent said it's the kind of thing that could snowball, so I'd best leave myself vacant for a while. Think you can find someone to replace me? Oh, I think that might just be possible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you shouldn't spoil me like this on my last night. I almost feel like staying now. No, 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 Liz, you owe it to yourself. I was going to treat you all at the wine bar. Please. You look terrible. I've got one of my recurring colds. Uh, recurring hangovers, you mean? How can it be a hangover? I didn't have that much wine to drink last night. <laughs> Did I? Well, no more than your average Roman orgy. <laughs> Talking of which, where's Liz? She's let us down again. I mean, we gave her yesterday afternoon off for that audition. On the solemn understanding, she'd get in early and finish these letters. What happens? She doesn't turn up. So I have to start typing them. It's just not good enough. No, you're absolutely right, Derek. And your spelling's not much better either. <laughs> We've been talking about Liz. It's time she buckled down to some efficient work and gave up this idea of full-time showbiz. People have to have dreams. Even you, Cobber. <clears throat> What, what, what do you mean, Cobber? Does the name Bondi Beach ring a bell? Bondi Beach? That's one of my deepest, innermost secrets. Who told you about Bondi Beach? You did. In fact, you told the whole wine bar. <laughs> when? <laughs> Last night, when you were as sober as a newt. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, you told us all, in the strictest confidence, of course, that your main great ambition was to be a lifeguard on Bondi Beach so that you could uh, chat up the sailors. <laughs> Wear one of those hats with the corks hanging from the brim. So that's why my briefcase was full of old corks. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> well, we took up a collection to get you started. You even offered to demonstrate the kiss of life with anyone in the bar. Oh, God. Any takers? No, not of the opposite sex, but... Uh, <laughs> there was this rather nice chap, um, Kevin... Not the one with the poodle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but, but he's... Uh, mm -hmm. I didn't demonstrate the kiss of life with him, did I? Well, at the last moment, you changed your mind and showed him how to repel sharks instead. Ah, <laughs> oh, Nell. Your friend arrived safely? I've sent her back to my place in a taxi. 
or rather two taxis. She's arrived with enough gear to stock an Oxfam shop. No sign of Liz, I see. I, I'd, I'd rather you didn't. <laughs> well, uh, Derek's avoiding the wine bar for a moment, you know, because uh, if he bumped into the wrong person, it could boomerang on him. I still feel rotten about leaving you in the lurch. Don't worry, Liz. Everything's worked out very neatly. Winifred is stepping into the breach. Winifred? Grand's old school child. Yes, it'll take her mind off her troubles. And stop her moping about my house. Besides, before she left her husband, she did all the secretarial work for his uh, double glazing firm. She was always very efficient. Yeah, that'll make a change. <laughs> to, to, to have a, an old efficient person, <coughs> a young, beautiful efficient person. Right, Liz, after a lifetime of service and devotion to the company, how long have you been with us? 18 months. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty short lifetime. Nevertheless, on these occasions, people usually get clocks. And so to carry out this ancient custom, I call upon the even more ancient... That's enough. Or should I say venerable? <laughs> Better. Director of... Director of our company, Dame Nelly Cressit. <laughs> no long speeches, Liz. Just our sincerest wishes for great, great happiness and success in your future career. And don't blame me for the clock. I didn't choose it. I didn't either. <laughs> Actually, I chose it. Oh, it's beautiful. Just what I always wanted, a Mickey Mouse travel along. Right, ladies and gentlemen, please raise your glasses. Hang on, hang on. I've got presents for you lot as well, you know. Oh. oh. Mrs. Cresset, this is for all the headaches I've caused you. Oh, what is it? A bottle of aspirin. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And for you, Mr. Yates, oh, yeah. just in case Mrs. Cresset's friend don't work out. The key to the... Keyboard, typing for beginners. Wow, thanks, Liz. <laughs> and I've got a book for you too, Izzy. The Sonnets of Shakespeare? Sam said he's your favourite. Did she, though? <laughs> <laughs> and for you, Sam, an autograph album with the signature of one of the world's biggest stars on page one. My girl and me know that our love will last forever. My girl. What are you doing? I have to learn rotten Shakespeare for English Lit today. <laughs> I'm quite blessed. Right, blessed is him that gives and him that takes. Can you understand that? No, but it would have been easier in Shakespeare's day if they had invented cornflakes. <laughs> I mean, it's just a load of words. It doesn't mean anything. Of course it does. It's all about magnanimity. Magna what? Well, compassion, forgiveness. Don't forget this. Man was the greatest poet ever. Greatest poet ever? So Dad says. You must be talking about Robert Burns, then. No, Isabel, William Shakespeare. Shakespeare? Yes. The greatest poet ever? Yes, I think most people would sort of agree with that. Well, how can Shakespeare be the greatest poet ever? You can't understand a word he says. That's just what I said. It's all these and those and hoity-toities. But Rabbit Burns spoke the common tongue. He knew the language 